Welcome to Choice Hacking. I am Jen Kleinhens. Today, we're going to walk through seven customer journey map examples. I'm going to talk about what I think is working, what's not, and how you can use each to improve your customer journey mapping skills. So let's get started. Okay, number one. So the reason I chose this customer journey map is because it has a really interesting visual take on combining touch points and the purchase journey. So usually you won't see touch points being the first thing under the stages of the purchase journey, but this map really makes the doing, so what customers are doing, feel like it's the most important part. And as somebody who uses a lot of behavioral science, to me, that's really important. Now, onto what I might change, I do feel like this map would really benefit from a more obvious emotional journey. Now, I'm not sure that the bar system here is communicating that emotional dimension. You can see it here in the experience section. It's also missing a key section for me, which is the persona. So who is this customer journey map or this user journey for? We're not quite sure just based off of what I'm seeing here. Moving on to number two, why I chose this journey map and what I like about it. Now, this map does a really great job of bringing a lot of information together in a single map, although you might argue it's a little bit too much information to have on a single customer journey or user journey map. And in terms of what I might change, it does a good job of combining multiple personas into a single journey map. It can confuse stakeholders, confuse people, make it harder to extract insight from the customer journey map, which is what we want at the end of the day. On to number three, it does a pretty good job of ticking all the boxes for like a good basic user journey or customer journey map. It's also an interesting purchase journey that I guess you would call it purchase, dating journey, um, that could lead to some exciting opportunities to innovate some interesting spaces. In terms of what it might change, this map would really benefit from some real life photos, whether that's UX from the app that they're working through. I believe this is actually like a Tinder um, breakdown. And I also think just photos from the real life process of any kind of research or seeing people actually using the app. It's a great way to bring it to life, but I think the trap that a lot of people fall into is they don't take photos when they're doing the research. And so they start using stock photos, which is not good. Don't do that. That's almost worse than like not using any photos at all. This map would be a little bit more robust or strong with a visualization of the emotional journey. I'm seeing like some ups and downs, but what type of emotion is down? How do I know when is a bad emotion? What's anxiety versus stress versus, you know, being angry or depressed? These variations in sentiment are really important because they help paint this empathetic picture of the customer or the user. On to number four. I do really like that they've used emojis to convey emotion. I think it's smart, it's easy to do, and it's eye-catching. Uh, the, emo the emojis also help express emotions in kind of a universal way. There's a lot more meaning that you could actually pull from using an image rather than words. As this is a wedding experience map, it makes sense that the purchase journey phases are at the bottom while the dates are at the top. So given the way most people plan for their weddings, having the timeline on top of the journey is a really interesting insight into the customer experience because it's very much about what has to happen by when, not so much going through an awareness, consideration, purchase, fulfillment, retention <laughs> section. I think this map would be stronger if it went more in depth on these touch points. So without more information on what the customer is doing, it's really hard to see tangible areas for improvement. So a little bit more context, a little bit more information. Number five, it's a great example of a clean, sort of easy to understand journey map. It displays a good level of detail for a presentation or like a quick pitch or even like a refresh of a customer journey map that's already been made. I would not consider this a full, complete customer journey map because it would need much more information. However, if you need to present a customer journey map that's cleaned up, that just has like the strong bullet points, this could be some good inspiration for that. The depth of information, again, is not going to be appropriate for like a full map. It's missing a few key sections and key parts. But again, it could work well as like a summary in an executive PowerPoint or like a pitch just to kind of get people on board with the big pieces without having to confuse them or overwhelm them with too much information. Number six, the reason I love this map and the reason I chose it is because of the visuals. It's really beautiful. It's very clean. It's giving me maybe I could use a little bit more information, but it's mostly giving me enough information. But it's also giving me some of this information in a visual way that's combining the emojis and like a really interesting use of a gradient between green and pink. So negative, neutral, 
like happy or good emotions. I think that's really interesting um, and something I will probably borrow at some point in the future if I can figure out how to do it. In terms of what I might change, the persona goals are included. They're not matched to the right parts of the journey. So it's hard to relate them to other parts of the map. Um, I think it would be much stronger if it actually included all of the core elements as well, including touch points, which are missing from this customer journey map. But in terms of visuals, I think it's really inspiring and they've done a good job of making something that's clean and easy to understand and that people who aren't necessarily going to spend a lot of time looking at it or going to um, appreciate. And our last customer journey map. Now, the reason I chose this one is because I really like the thought of calling touch points tools. So you can see here, he's got, you know, tools, computer, car, meat, vegetables, gentle words, fork, knife, spoon, dishwasher, cloth. It has this formula for opportunities, right? So people plus need plus insight. I would love to apply that in the future. However, I do think these opportunities could be matched to the pain points a little bit more closely. They should also consider naming more specific solutions rather than framing the opportunities so broadly. You can see we've got people need insight. People need to cook meals for kids, need a way to cook efficiently when we don't have too much time to cook. So it's like, okay, the opportunities I think are lacking a little bit, but there are some things to really like about this style of customer journey map. That sums up all of the journey map examples. You can find a link to download all of these in the description below. If you're new here, you can subscribe and turn on notifications. You can also join my free marketing psychology newsletter. The link is in the description. So take care and I will see you in the next video.